All good. Okay. Um, so yeah, this in a way also this this, this uh, kind of follows on quite nicely from uh, Alejandro's talk because uh, this is also almost bare metal, um, and we've um, yeah sort of been sort of trying like we've been trying to solve some similar problems. Um, so first of all, I uh, thought of a, a, a brief slide to say who I am. I'm a senior software engineer. Um, actually, first used Yacht in 2016 at another company. That's another story. Um, joined Arm in 2021. I work in the uh, automotive industrial and edge solutions team uh, at Arm uh, in the open source software group. Um, we develop reference stacks for automotive and IoT use cases uh, to showcase Arm IP. Um, and we, we're, we're big fans of Yocto. We use it in all our reference stacks. And we work very closely with the RSS Yocto team, Maka, John, and Ross, who are here today. Um, so we're very grateful for all they do in MetaArm and, and other layers. Um, so introduction. Um, so if anyone hasn't heard of Zephyr, um, um, it's uh, an Artos. Um, there's a description on the screen. Um, uh, this isn't to talk about the Zephyr Artos itself, so don't ask any t too difficult questions about Zephyr. Uh, this is about um, the Meta Zephyr integration layer. Um, which we have contributed to um, for reasons that will become apparent later. Uh, so, the, so I went. I went to sort of look at the Git log. Um, the first commit is in 2017. The first sort of commit from ARM was a couple of years ago, and our team started uh, making contributions last year. It depends on Meta Python because the uh, the Zephyr build process uses lots of Python libraries. Um, no full time maintainers. It's kind of a, a best effort. Like we. We, we, we have a need, so we, we, we're uh, doing our best to kind of keep things up to date. And, and John's doing a lot, a lot of work as well. Um, but there's no one's working on this full time, so um, yeah, this, it, it's, it's kind of in maintenance mode a little bit. Um, and then, so there are two layers um, MetaZephyr Core and MetaZephyr BSP. Um, MetaZephyr Core has, is, has most of the recipes has, for, for building Zephyr. And then Zephyr, Meta Zephyr BSB um, is mainly just uh, machine configurations. So this is in four sections, um, kind of all related to Meta Zephyr. So I'll, I'm going to do a brief sort of getting started guide. And I might be sort of preaching to the converted in this room because everyone uses Open Embedded. But I'll, I'll, go, th I'll go through how to, um, how, how to download and use Zephyr, Meta Zephyr. And then I'm going to go through how we're using MetaZephyr in our team, uh, using a couple of uh, reference stacks. And then I'm going to talk about runtime validation. And then finally, um, some recent contributions that we've made to MetaZephyr to support our use cases. So getting started. Um, so hello world is always a good place to start. Um, we're um, big users of CAS uh, at ARM. Uh, so, so this isn't a talk about CAS, but it's um, a tool you can use to automate um, your sort of build and dependencies when using Yocto. So, so it makes, uh, we, we use this quite a lot because it makes things uh, really simple. Um, uh, so we clone the repository. We use CAS shell, which figures out all the dependencies and sets up, sets up a big environment, build Hello World, and then... I uh, use Ring Kimu, and I'm going to attempt to do a demo. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can find my cursor. You should do a GIF. <laughs> yeah, I should have done a GIF. No um, break it live. <laughs> so this is recorded. Um, apologies for the font size. I hope you can see it. Um, so yeah, we're doing the cast shell. Bit break, hello world. <coughs> I might skip a little bit because uh, passing all the meta Python takes a little while. Um, and we're using, uh, oh no, yep. So, yep, it's building loads of recipes. Uh, it's downloading the Zephyr SDK. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> and then, yeah, run Kimu. 
And yep, hello world on the Cortex A53. And oh. cool. yeah, so that's that's hello world. Um, if if you have a want to add a new machine, this is really straightforward, especially if there's an existing board definition in upstream Zephyr. Um, uh, essentially, so this is uh, the machine comp for the Kimi Cortex M3, and it's basically all all the configuration is to do with sort of supporting run Kimi. Um, the key thing is the Zephyr board bit bake variable which defaults um, essentially to the Yocto machine. So in this case, it automatically picks up the Kimi Cortex M3 board from Zephyr itself. Um, so you're adding a new board's really easy. Um, so the next section is about, as I said, um, is it maybe a little bit of an infomercial for our reference stacks, but I'm gonna sort of highlight where we've um, used Meta Zephyr and then some, uh, yeah, yeah, how, some and, yeah, yep. Um, so this is a bit of context for the following slides um, on our city. So this is all for automotive um, related use cases. Um, so we've done two software releases in the last month. Um, the, the, the one on the left is the ARM V8R ARCH 64 stack for mobile modem and storage controller applications that require minimized latencies. This is all quoted from the documentation. Um, and then so on the right is the uh, an automotive reference design. Um, the kind of software engineer's view of this is that um, uh, this is, is the, the, the differences in the core types. So an ARM makes A cores, A cores, R, R cores, and M cores application real time microcontrollers. Um, the, R, the, R, the stack on the left is ju for just R cores. The stack on the right is for A plus R. And the idea, the, the basic idea is that you can use the um, increased performance of the A calls, but supplement it with something that we're calling the safety island um, in order to sort of in, enhance the availability of the overall system. Um, so first of all, the, uh, the, the R call stack, um, this is running uh, what we call bare metal Zephyr on the FVP. Um, this is interesting, so, so we're not using, we're only using MetaZephyr core, we're not using MetaZephyr BSP. The, the board definition for this is in our in our reference stack layer. Um, and we this, this is a, a little bit of config, a config snippet. There's a bit, there's a, we have to do some tricks because there's two board definitions for this FVP upstream. So we do a switch for the Zephyr board based on a, another variable and then pass that directly to the um, Zephyr K-Config. Um, there are some links at the bottom. I hope there's a way maybe to share slides afterwards. Um, there's quite a lot of links in this presentation. Um, uh, the next one, so it's the same, the same uh, base, base, sort of base, um, but we're running uh, Linux and Zephyr at the same time using Xen. And the late, latest release for this stack also demonstrates uh, communication between the two domains using OpenAMP. Uh, we, so we, this is sort of based on a previous example, but we have uh, another BB append in a dynamic layers virtualization layer um, uh, where we're kind of apply, well, well, we're applying a device tree overlay and an additional configuration file on top of the upstream Zephyr config. Um, in order to, to specialize the board definition to run on Zen. Um, so again, the yeah, yeah, doc, docs and code at the bottom, the, the docs are quite extensive. We've, we've, our team have put quite a lot of effort into the documentation, so I encourage you to go and read that. Um, so this is the example on the right from the first slide. Um, the interesting thing here is that um, the board definition is not actually upstream. Um, because um, a lot of the use cases are uh, dependent on having the A calls, um, we're not entirely sure at the moment if and when we will go upstream with this board definition. So we have a sort of, um, I guess, a mono repo approach where we have all the board and the BSP 
and also a Zephyr module with some custom drivers in the same repository as the Yotso layer. And you can see there's a there's, there's some little bit of um, screw URI hacking to get that work, working, but it, yeah, it works quite nicely for our use case. Um, and the rest of that is the same as you as the other slide. Um, so runtime validation. Um, so this, yeah, this has follows up quite on, on quite nicely from the previous talk. Um, so first of all, um, how do you run the tests? Um, again, you can use CAS, and we're appending uh, uh, an additional CAS file on the end, and this is going to run um, a bunch of the the test cases that you see as a Z test from Zephyr upstream and then automatic validate that, that, that they all pass. I guess, I guess it's kind of doing a, a similar thing to Twister in Zephyr itself. Um, it's you know, building loads of images and, and, and testing the output automatically with one command. Um, so doing a bit of a, a deep dive into this. Um, so Meta Zephyr core, uh, we have um, this, this is this is the test case. The, the, it's the same test case for all of the Z tests because they have the same output, and it's doing a thing where it does read line, um, then in a while loop, and then eventually you know, make, make, make sure that, that it passed successfully. Um, in our the first reference stack that I described, we 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 have a test case for the Hello World app. But it's using a different API. This is a, a like, a, like a, a bare metal serial testing API that we've added in MetaRAM to support our our models. Um, like it, it's a bit. It, I feel like this is an area for improvement, maybe, because uh, obviously there's. Like we'd love to, have, for example, to upstream this test case to MetaZephyr, but it's complicated because we need to support our use cases as well. Um, and but both of these work by uh, changing the test target bit break parameter. So this is the, there's a default one for Kimu in OE core, but you can it, it, there's a way of swapping that out and using your own class. So we've done that and added a load of extra methods to do serial testing. Um, and yes, it's Kimu target Zephyr in which is a a, a target class in Meta Zephyr. An OEFVP serial target, which is a test target in in MetaRAM. Um, so I'm going to go, go into a little more detail about this. Um, like we have other requirements on our team, um, so we, we we want to support multiple protocols. Um, we we want to log the tests executed and all of the console output from all the serial consoles. Um, we want to support both. Uh, our simulated the sort of our, our ARM simulations that we use, but also we, we occasionally do need to use sort of real hardware. Um, lo so locally on CI, we like having the test cases in the same repository as the implementation. It makes this uh, sort of the the it is, I guess again it's like a mono repo approach where, where you change one thing and everything automatically gets tested. Um, so and then the two last ones look kind of mutually exclusive, but maybe it's maybe it's possible to to, um, to to do both. We kind of want it to be decoupled. So if your target hardware is on a different machine, it'll still work. But we we also like the OEQA bit bake integration. So you can run run one command that automatically builds and and tests your system. Um, it's been interesting talking to a few people this weekend, like um, who obviously use Open Embedded Yocto, and obviously do uh, do runtime testing, but don't necessarily do both together. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to think is this uh, strictly necessary? But um, I think there are advantages, especially for simulated targets. Um, so again, going down this route, um, there are a couple of obvious choices. Uh, Lava uh, is an obvious choice at ARM. We have a very close relationship with Linaro. Um, I uh, quoted um, some like the headlines from the documentation. 
Um, it's, uh, the, but the summary is there is a smart server and a thin client, and you write your test definitions in YAML on the server. Um, I've also been doing some sort of investigations into LabGrid. I know um, yeah, some of the maintainers are in the room today. Um, this is kind of has the opposite model. I, I hope I'm describing this correctly, but it has it's a sort of a smart client with a thin server, and it has a built-in PyTest integration. Um, in many ways, um, so actually, yeah, the smart client kind of means that the server is optional, and you can just run it in local mode, which is would be quite a nice fit for Yoto integration. But this is still like an area of investigation. Um, yeah, so like I, I put these slides because like this is a kind of a pain point for us. Um, I'd love to hear from other people who are doing bare metal testing, and would would. Um, It'd be interesting to exchanging ideas and trying to find some solutions. Um, so finally, yeah, back back to Metazephyr. I'm going to describe um, some contributions we've made recently, um, and which also kind of highlights some of the pain points of Metazephyr that it would be nice as maybe to try and discuss with the Zephyr community. Um, the first is um, so we have a requirement to compile our Zephyr applications using the official um, Zephyr SDK, which is pre-built. Um, so, so if you just download MetaZephyr today, it, it uses the OE core toolchain. Um, we've added a, like a, a switch. If you set your Zephyr toolchain variant to Zephyr, then instead it will, um, it will download the Zephyr SDK and use that instead. Um, I've, I've put I've, I've, I've put some of the reasons for that on the slides slide. Um, well, yeah, one of the the big ones is that like the OE core sort of gen seems to receive the latest GCC before the latest before the Zephyr SDK releases. So if there's a, an issue in Zephyr because of the um, there's, a, the, 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 there's an outstanding issue in uh, Meta Zephyr Master, which is because. Um, the latest version of GC is using some floating point uh, optimizations um, by default, um, which requires um, changes to the model. So th 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 this is a, a pain point. Um, and at the bottom, I've tried to describe sort of how the, the kind of flow of artifacts. So um, the Zephyr SDK internally uses cross tool ng for its tool chains and OE core for the host tools and then meta zephyr pulls that and uses the build your zephyr app um it is a bit it's is a bit crazy because we're there's there's like two octo builds in there um but but um and i i understand that the zephyr sdk did used to use yocto um I, I don't know the reasons why that changed, um, but it would be interesting to discuss why why that was and and you know, make, 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 and to try and find a more elegant solution. Um, the next one, uh, remove build time dependency on West. So West is uh, Zephyr's meta tool for build and dependency management. Um, so if you go to the Zephyr documentation, step one is download West, and then you run West and it automatically pulls all, all your modules and you're in West build and it builds your app. Um, this is a sort of, there's a, there's a conflict here with Yocto because Yocto also wants to manage your dependencies and uh, build your app. So the, the current solution, um, so I submitted some patches for this uh, last year, which no one objected to, uh, was that um, there's a script in the layer which uh, uses a ginger recipe template to um, use West as a library to access your dependency information and automatically populate a dot .inc file, which gets included from your recipe. And then, the, and then at build time, there is um, no West recipe. Um, it uses the screw URI that's been um, automatically populated by the script and and it just talks to CMake directly. So West it uses it, it's at build time. It's quite a thin wrapper around CMake, so that's um, yeah, it works reasonably well. 
and it makes use of um, existing mechanisms in, 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 in BitBake for caching and, and mirrors. Um, the, the final thing uh, is we have submitted a GitLab CI configuration. Uh, we use GitLab a lot internally in, in RSS at ARM. Um, the GitLab CI config file is upstream. We're running this every night on master. So even though um, yeah, there's no, there, there are external mirrors that aren't that hard to find, but um, yeah, if, if you think you're using MetaZephyr, you can know that ARM oh, are, yeah, we're, we're running this nightly and we're, we're trying our best to fix any issues that arise on, on 20 different boards. And on the right is a, this is actually a screenshot from uh, Langdale. Um, the, as I mentioned earlier, there's, there's, a, there's one build failure in master at the moment, and it relates to the Kiwi Cortex A9, which um, will get fixed at some point, but it's not, it's not a target that we uh, use actively, so um, your contributions are welcome as well. And that is all. I, yeah, yeah, um, yeah thanks, and um, 